Chapter 17, The Runaway. The cake has just been cut at Mason and Mickey's ninth birthday party when... Thanks, Mom. There's a tense pause before Addison rounds on you. Her words, a whispered hiss. How dare you turn my own kids against me? What? You've got it all wrong. I'm wrong. Did you want to marry my wife and mother my boys? Addison, be... It's not enough that I lost years with them. But I returned to find some other woman stole my life. Stole everything I care about. You glance around at the silent room and find everyone's eyes on you and Addison. I bet you've been training the boys to call you mom. The kids all look upset and confused, Mason and Mickey most of all. Uh, that's not true. Mom, what's going on? Grown up stuff, Mickey. Addison, can we discuss this somewhere private? Don't give me that, Sam! You're just trying to brush me off! Addison, please. Think about the boys. You're confused enough by this whole situation without us arguing in front of us. Please, you may have everyone else fooled by this innocent act, but I see through it. You've been setting me up to fail all along! Addison, that's ridiculous. Is it? I'd bet good money that Anna sabotaged my original cake just so she could swoop in and save the day. That's bull and we all know it. Mason and Mickey look up at you, fear in their eyes. Sam's parents move in in front of them, shielding them from the fight. Hey kids, why don't we go eat our cake outside? I'm not really hungry anymore. That's okay, we can go watch the horses instead, come on. Curtis and I will help. As the Daltons and Addison's parents heard all the kids out of the earshot, you feel your anger bubbling up inside of you. Addison, you're absolutely delusional. You really think I'm training your kids against you? Then I want you to pick a fight at their own damn birthday party? I can't tell if you're being vindictive or if you really just didn't think of them at all. Are you insinuating? I'm not finished. You knew how much today meant to them, but you obviously didn't care. You're the one who ruined the party, not me. Sam wraps an arm around you, a gesture that's both comforting and unifying. Anna's right, this tantrum was childish and completely uncalled for. Instead of throwing around baseless ac accusations, how about you grow up? You're just siding with her because she's your girlfriend! No, I'm walking away from Sam to protect the boys. I'm not the one who keeps hurting them, you are. Make no judge mistake, Addison. Judge Suarez will be hearing about this incident. Sam, be reasonable. This doesn't need to be brought up into a custody case. Come on, Anna. Let's get the boys. I think the party's over. That night after you get home. You and Sam stumble into your room, exhausted after putting the boys to bed. I've never seen Mason and Mickey so upset. Yeah, well, they will be once I walk out of their lives. Did you hear Mason during the dinner? He was sniffling the whole time. I can't believe Addison. If it was in my power, I'd make sure she never had a chance to upset them like that again. I get the impulse, but I think Addison's the only one who can make this right. God, what a mess. Sam sits down on the bed and buries her head in her hands. You lean down and take her in your arms, holding her tight. Sam, the boys are going to be okay. Mickey and Mason aren't the first kids whose birthday party got messed up because of family drama. It was awful to see them so upset, but it's not going to ruin their lives. Still, I'm going to check on the boys again. I want them to know that I'm in there here for them, and honestly, I need to be close to them. Of course, give them an extra kiss for me, okay? As she leaves, you glance over the clock. It strikes you that you were supposed to be leaving them right now. Oh my god, Mason? Mickey? Anna, come quick! Your blood runs cold as she, at her shouts from down the hall, and you run into the boys' room. What is it? Sam looks at you, eyes wild with fear. You take in the sight of empty bunk beds and pillaged dressers. The boys, they're, they're gone. They, they left this. With a shaking hand, Sam passes you a piece of paper she's holding. Dear Mom and Anna, We regret to tell you this, but we are running away. Everyone was mad today because of us. But if we leave, you won't fight anymore. So we're going to the end of the world where to live somewhere without adult problems. Kids can mess up. 
We will miss you, even though we know you will be better off without us. Hey, look at that! It's almost like, ironically, this is the same <laughs> mentality. <laughs> and it's probably, let's just say, 30, is having herself. Sincerely, Mason and Mickey Dalton. Sam, they haven't gotten far. I hope you're right. They're resourceful when they want to be. I'll start calling friends and family. We'll find them. 20 minutes later, you're gathered in the living room, your search party assembled, and the police on site. Don't worry, Miss Dalton. We'll do everything in our power to find your sons. Thank you, officer. All around you are the family and friends who have dropped everything to help you find the twins, including a red-eyed Addison. They must be so scared all alone out there. Like you gave a shit. <sighs> Deep breaths. <clears throat> be brave, dear. There's no reason to think anything's bad's happening to them. Thank you all for coming so fast. Of course. Nothing's more important than finding the boys. I just hope they're okay. How long have the boys been gone? We put them to bed 45 minutes ago. That's not ideal. I've seen those two move pretty fast when they put their minds to it. Mason and Mickey are smart and resourceful. They can take care of themselves long enough for us to find them, I'm sure, but... It's true. Sam raised some clever kids. We need to move if we want to catch up to them. What's the best plan of action here? In cases like this, runaways often stick with places they know best, like their school or family member's house. Marisol and uh, Will will can cover the school. Me and Sophia will take Dalton Russo. If everyone pairs off and goes looking, we'll be able to cover more ground in less time. And with those instructions, everyone splits into pairs to spread out and search. Only you, Sam, and Carter remain. We'll also want someone to, rem uh, someone to help me coordinate the teams and eliminate co locations from here. It's best if someone who's familiar with everyone is involved with the search. Sounds like that might have to be my job, but... She looks to you uncertainly writ in her features. I'd feel so helpless just waiting around for everyone else to report in. Maybe Carter can stay here instead of going with me? I'll go wherever I'm needed. Sam steps toward you, lowering her voice, the sound of it filled with vulnerability. To be honest, I'm barely holding it together. I really need you right now, Anna. This is a diamond choice. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. This is a diamond choice. Then you leave Sam behind, guys. Uh, don't tear up with Sam, you... Mm. The writers irk me. You gently take Sam's hand in yours. Of course, I'll look with you, Sam. She releases the breath she's been holding, giving your hand a squeeze. Thank you, Anna. Now let's not waste any more time. As you and Sam rush down the city streets, you work on a plan for finding the twins. I think the best way to do this is to retrace the places we've taken the boys before. They're way more likely to go somewhere familiar, and we can use it as a process of elimination with the other groups. That sounds as good a place to start as any. What do you think we should look first? Let's check the planetarium. The memory of the first fun day we had together will draw them there. And Sam walk up to the planetarium and find it dark and nearly empty, save for the custodian mopping the main lobby. Hey, you can't be here right now. We're closing up. Ken, we just have ten minutes. Our boys are missing and we think they might have come here. Please, we're desperate. She studies you for a long moment before letting out a sigh. Alright, you can have ten minutes. Thank you. The silence is palpable as you begin your search, and you can tell Sam is stewing. Hey, talk to me. You're not alone in this. I'm just thinking of when you brought the boys here. Things were so much easier back then. You mean back when I was your dirty little secret? We had Sophia to deal with. That was no work in the park, but at least the kids didn't think I wanted them gone. You pull Sam to a stop and bring her in for a tight hug. Sam, they don't. They just wrote that because they're upset. You don't know that. Listen, have you seen Anna? She's acting literally like a nine-year-old. She was going to do the same. Well, let's hurry up and find them so you can show them how much you want them around. The two of you check every room of the planetarium, but the boys aren't there. Come on, let's try somewhere else. You'll say I'm thank the custodian and head out uh, back into the night. You stop in the animal shelter you and Sam took the boys to last year, and a kind volunteer lets you in after hours. No sign of them here. Most likely, 
and logically, it would probably be the place where Anna lives that you no longer live at. You head to Central Park next to shining flashlights into the shadows of the trees. Mickey? Mason? Nothing. You even find the location of the food fest you took them to what feels like a lifetime ago. Only a few trucks remain without the festival. No luck. Eventually, you and Sam make your way towards the ice cream parlor where you got ice cream tacos with the boys a few weeks ago. Look, they're still open. But when you rush inside, no sign of the boys. They're not here either. Of course not. With utter desperation in her voice makes you turn and look at Sam, and you find her shaking. Damn it. She kicks a trash can in frustration, sending it sliding several feet across the floor. Sam, what did the trash can ever do to you? It did its job! You rush over to her side as she sinks to a nearby chair, burying her head in her hands. This is all my fault. Sam, no. You sit in the chair next to hers and then place a hand on her arm, but she doesn't even seem to feel it. What kind of mom doesn't notice her kids sneaking out? Oh, what kind of mom makes her kids feel like a burden, like they're not wanted? Because you didn't. That's Addison's fault, not yours. She barely even knows them, I do. I, I should have seen they, they were feeling that way. She stares down at the table and you see a single tear drop rolling down her cheek. I failed them. And now who knows where they are, what's happening to them. You take her hand tightly and bring it to your lips. The tender gesture catches her attention and she looks at you, over at you teary-eyed. Sam, you haven't failed Mason and Mickey. You've raised two amazing, empathic, empathetic boys. You've taught them to care about other people, which means they notice when their loved ones are hurting. They saw us struggling and wanted to help. They just didn't know how. Kind of like you. You take Sam's other hand, cradling them both with yours. All you've ever done was try to protect them. What if it's not enough? What if we don't find them? We will, I swear it. Sam looks at you, expressions of hope and pain warring on her face. Anna. You place a hand on her cheek and bring her face toward yours for a long kiss. Listen, do you want to go in the back of the ice cream shop and bounce chicka wow wow? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That was typically the writers of Pixelberry's mentality. You press your lips to Sam's once again before lightly dragging them to the side, planting a kiss on one of her cheeks and then the other. Her eyes flutter closed as you place both hands on the side of her face, pressing a kiss to her forehead. Anna. You return your lips to hers again as you give her one more sweet kiss. You pull back, leaving your hand on Sam's face as you stroke her cheek with your thumb. How are you feeling? I'm feeling stronger. Though, I shouldn't be surprised. You always give me strength, Anna. Think you're ready to keep looking? Yeah, I think I can handle it. As you step back out into the street, Sam Pauls is giving you a look of adoration. Thank you, Anna. I don't know what I'd do without your support. Your stomach flips, the thought of your plan to leave lingering in the back of your mind, so you say nothing in response. You just link your arm through Sam's, leaning your head against her shoulders as you resume the search. After a while of searching, you and Sam head back to the apartment, feeling discouraged. There has to be some kind of clue about where they could have gone. The note was pretty vague, but maybe there's something we're missing. You pour over the note once again, reading it aloud as you scan through. End of the world. Somewhere without adult problems. What if... That's it. I think they went to Coney Island. They said they were going to the end of the world. Coney Island. At the end of the city. And somewhere without adult problems. The amusement park. Sam pulls out her phone and quickly types something. I just checked their calendar. Coney Island's open late on Saturday nights. But as you move to leave, you're struck with a thought. Maybe we should let Addison know where the boys are too? No, she can no, she can piss off. At this point, she'd probably cause more harm than good. I can't stay, I disagree. Come on, no time to lose. When you arrive at Coney Island, you take in the sea of colorfully lit ride stalls against the backdrop of the ocean, and your heart hammers in your chest. They're here somewhere. I can feel it. This place is huge. Where should we start? 
Mm, let's check by the games. You hurry over to the game stall, Sam on your heels. I don't see them by the ring toss. As you approach the water gun game, you spot two. You spot twin boys hunched over and poised to play. Your heart pounds as you call out to them. Mason, Mickey. But as you rush towards them, calling out, one of them turns. Uh huh, who are you? Sorry, I thought you were someone else. Shoulder slumped, you return to Sam, shaking your head. I don't think they're by the games. Let's try somewhere else. Maybe they went by the big rides? The two of you quickly make your way over to the cyclone, rushing up to the ride attendant working the board. Excuse me, have you seen two little boys around here? You're an amusement park that's very specific. Lady, I've seen hundreds of little boys in the past hour. Please, they're twins, about four feet tall. If that's the case, they wouldn't be over here. She nods to a sign that says, You must be this tall to ride! With a line several inches higher than the boys hide. The only ride on the side of the park they could get on is the Wonder Wheel. She nods towards the Ferris Wheel, and you spot Mason and Mickey at the top. There. They're at the top of the Ferris Wheel. You and Sam sprint over to the Wonder Wheel, pushing your way to the front of the line. You explain the situation to the ride attendant. When the boy's car comes to a pause back at the bottom, you open the gate and hop in with him. Mom? A Anna? Listen, listen. Hey, hey, hey. You called me mom earlier. You resume, you little bastard. <laughs> oh, you and Sam wrap them in the biggest hugs you've ever given as a Ferris wheel or surges ahead, quickly gaining momentum as it climbs to the top. You guys have no idea how relieved we are that you're okay. The boys wriggle out of your arms, looking confused. Uh, what are you doing here? We came to find you, of course. Uh, but everyone's so mad at each other because of us. We make everything worse. See, I understand your mentality. You're nine years old. You don't understand shit about life, okay? C Listen, you're adorable. That's not true. You two mean the world to us. Not one of us would trade you for anything. But you got in a big fight because of us. No, we got in a big fight because your original mom, Addison, is a big... <laughs> Mm. Nostrils flare. Listen to me carefully. None of that was your fault. Sometimes grown-ups fight, and they might even fight about you. But that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. And even if the fight was something because of something you did, it wouldn't change how much we love you. Nothing could. Not even if we were bank robbers or turned into monsters? Okay, what kind of monsters are we talking? But bank robbers, nah, you're good, kid. Oh, nope, not even then. So, you have no reason to ever run away again, understood? Yeah, Mom. Understood. Good. Now let's go home. Yeah, you little shits! You're getting the belt when we return- No, I'm kidding. <laughs> A couple hours later, you return home with Sam and the boys after the search is called off. Sam emerges from the twins' room, closing the door silently behind her. She collapses onto the couch beside you. Quick! Rig the door! They might try and escape again! Both boys are present and accounted for. Thankfully, yes. It's nice to have my family safely under one roof again. She gently places a hand on your shoulder. All of my family. Sam. Her whole body tenses at the sound of her name, and she raises a hand to stop you. Please don't tell me you're gonna leave right now. After everything else that's happened, my heart just can't take it. Wordlessly, you shift your body to throw your arms around her neck. I'm not going anywhere tonight. She presses her lips to yours in a passionate kiss, running her hands up and down your back as she pulls you close. Good, I need you, Anna. Now and always. Her eyes break your body, a sudden fire blazing behind them. In fact, let me prove it to you. No. Um, um, what? Jesus Christ, these writers, man. What part of no do you understand? Stop touching me! It's been a long day. All I want right now is to fall asleep in your arms. We're acting like the relationship's not over, it's wild. That can be arranged. In fluid motion, Sam stands and then dips down to lift you in her arms and carries you off to bed. She-Hulk, is that you? What? I'm the wrong of the strong woman. Mwah! Early the next morning, you and Sam are awoken by the sound of an elevator. 
by the two of you quickly get dressed and head to the front hallway where you find Addison. Ugh. Hold on, let me take my cyanide capsule right now. Hello, Anna and Sam. Addy, I'm not sure the twins are ready to see you just yet. They're both still asleep after the night they had. I want to check with them before I... It's alright, I'm just glad to hear they're okay. I'm not here to talk to them. Her gaze moves from Sam's to yours. I'm here to talk to Anna. Do I want to talk to you? Oh, up <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Piss off with this! Piss off, Pixelberry! This is, this is, they, like I said, they are pushing this. What did I say? Chapter 20 at the most. Chapter 20 at the most. I was saying and aiming for, like, 18, figuring how shittily written this was. But no, chapter 20 at the most. Oh, you know, you know, this is kind of like saying that you have, like, cancer with this damn shit. Um, anyway... First and foremost, I hope hopefully you all did enjoy. I try my best with this this God, to think this was a halfway decent book I once put everything into and then like book two came out and it was ugh. then this Oh you know, I went for like a week straight with no allergy medicine for a test recently. And I, I I'm allergic to cats and, and dogs and I still love the shit out of them, right? I still love them. And I'll, I'll still, like, hold them and kiss them and pat them and everything, right? And I don't care. It hurts. You know, your eyes get a little swelly and red and irritated and the whole nine years. Okay. Anyway, long story short is, um, I would rather go through that again, and that was a week of hell, let me be honest with you, than, can, like, have a book four of this shit. Am I the only one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you felt entertained by at least what I'm doing... I know, Pixelberry, it's... Uh, we get Laws of Attraction, and then we get this. This makes no sense. Please remember that if you did enjoy what I do, and uh, what I bring to you, remember to like and share the video. Head down to the description of the video. There's a bunch of links. Feel free to check those out. And uh, I'll catch you all in uh, the next video. Please uh, save me from this book. <laughs>